Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit today about this guy here. This is the SRS A1 um, by Silverback Airsoft and this is my uh, sniper rifle that I've um, basically had now for about three months. Um, and I basically wanted to talk about this guy uh, in a little bit of depth about what I've done with it and how it came about. And um, yeah, give you a bit, guys, a bit of information about um, a superb rifle. But before we kick off, um, I'd like to say if you guys like today's video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And with that, let's crack on and talk about this gun. So, what do we have here? We have a SRS A1 by um, Silverback Airsoft. This is a replica of the Desert Tech um, SRS A1 um, sniper platform. It is a essentially a replica of a real steel gun that is available in a variety of uh, configurations, um, both in the airsoft version and in the real steel version. The real steel version has multiple caliber options from, um, I think, uh, 300, 308, 338, the um, Perla Magnum, and um, even 50 cal variants are available. It also comes in different lengths as well. Um, this is the main sort of commonality between the airsoft version, because of course you've only got one caliber for airsoft. But the airsoft version has a number of length versions as well. This is the 16 inch covert. It is available in a 22 18 inch as well. Um, and this, as I say, is the 16 inch covert. It is also various available in different finishes as well, in black, um, olive green, and um, this, which is um, full desert earth. Um, this is basically the full desert earth version. I've had this now since before Christmas, and it is a great gun. So this guy was built for me by a guy called Sniper Mechanic, and Sniper Mechanic is uh, a guy who essentially builds a lot of um, airsoft replica sniper weapons and a few other piece, um, pieces as well. Um, he has an Instagram channel um, and he also has a blog website which has a bunch of information about the SOS on it but also he builds some custom parts as well. Um, this was put together by him um, for me using a, a selection of different parts. Now I, I spoke to him when I was looking for this originally and said this is kind of what I'm looking for and he, and he proposed a particular set of features and upgrades. So what we've got in here, um, as I say, this is a 16-inch covert. It is a bullpup sniper rifle. Now, the great thing about bullpup sniper rifles, even though this is actually very short, the barrel length on this is actually pretty long. So the barrel on this essentially goes from about here to about here. This actually is running a 420 millimeter AEG barrel. Now, the SRS platform uh, for Airsoft actually is quite cool in the fact that you can use AEG parts for the rifle. And by that means you can use AG barrels, AG hops, and so on. So it is actually pretty, pretty cool. Now, what we've got in here, say, is a, is a 420 millimeter barrel. So specifically, we have a TNT Studio um, AG barrel in here. Uh, we also have a TNT Studio hop rubber, um, hop bucking, and that is a 50 degree angle hop bucking in there as well. And we've also got a couple of other useful pieces in here. We have something called a fast hop, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, we have the uh, Sniper Mechanics SRS Wasp Piston, which is a weighted piston in here. And we also have a custom nub um, that uh, Sniper Mechanics made for the SRS. Now, I did order when I bought this a Prowler nub, but that didn't get fitted. Uh, the custom nub did because it performs better. On top of that, we have a M150 spring in here. Now, this, is, this rifle is really, really good in the fact that you can change springs really, really quickly and fit any spring size you want. It comes with an M120 as a default base spring, um, but essentially what I've got in here is the M150. 
Now in terms of other bits on this, uh, there are some sort of ancillary things that I've added since I received this just to kind of change the look and also how it feels. I've changed the knob. This is um, uh, an, uh, the, the knob um, is, is customizable. Uh, it comes with a normally a round knob, but I don't like the feel of that. Uh, so I've got this one in here, more tactical. We've also got a new muzzle uh, brake on here, which is used with the suppressor, uh, the silencer that basically gets um, used with this gun. Um, by default, it has a very small little um, ca uh, cap that goes on there, but it is a under the underneath here a 14 millimeter counterclockwise um, sort of mount, so you can fit any sort of um, silencer that basically has that fitting. But this has a quick; it's, it's part of a quick release system for the silencer. Now, um, also. I've got on here at the moment a Vortex Optics Diamondback Tactical Scope. Um, this is a great scope on here. It's a, it is pretty large, but it is really, really handy on here. It works really nicely. So, um, in terms of how this kind of works, it is a ball pup, so the magazine goes in here. Um, the bolt is... Um, here on the on the right now there is a left-handed version of this and there was on a previous on previous versions although this is not on this one a push action bolt so this is a pull action bolt so it locks back when it um, gets pulled but there is a push version a variant of it which essentially works the opposite way it's got an easy pull back but you push harder to to um, cock it it has ambidextrous uh, magazine release, so there's a magazine release here on the right, and there's also one on the left here. Uh, so it's ambidextrous uh, magazine release. It has got a, a chin rest here, which is adjustable. The two Allen key screws there to raise this up and down. Um, it has essentially um, sling release um, mount points. So this is actually an addition that I've added um, onto this. It does come with uh, uh, Picatinny uh, rails that can be added. Um, I've basically got these on two sides. Uh, the third one, which would go here, has been replaced by this. And so I can essentially you could put a foregrip on here, or you could put a camera or a light or something if you wanted to on there. So alongside that quick release, um, sling point you've also got one here and likewise on this side here so you can essentially mount a sling on this anywhere and i use a mag pull uh, sling with this and it works really nicely um, it is i say ambidextrous in the sense that everything except this uh, works on both sides in that we have a safety on both sides here a very simple um, smooth safety works really well the trigger is quite straight, uh, very nice feel to it, works really well. It's got a, quite a big, chunky um, hand grip on there. And, and there is actually a really good um, thing about this, is it can almost double up as a little bit of a stand stroke bipod. You've got a little monopod here that's adjustable. Um, and then you can use this in concert with this to basically get a very steady shot. It is a very small gun. Um, but it's still, it is pretty heavy, um, but it, it does work really nicely. And it is, after all, a sniper weapon, so you want to get a good stable shot. So resting this on a, a nice surface uh, alongside this, and you can get some really, really good, accurate shots in. So that's kind of the outside. One thing I'm not sort of covered on is this. As I say, this, is, um, this muzzle brake is part of um, one of the sort of elements that, come, that you can get for this, which is this. This is a replica uh, by um, Silverback Airsoft of the Desert Tech uh, 338 um, caliber uh, silencer. It is a quick uh, release system. Uh, well, in the sense that it will screw in here onto, the, onto this muzzle brake, and it, it, it literally is super quick to sort of fit and it doesn't add a huge length to the actual gun. Um, now, 
as I said, it does under the, underneath here have a 14mm counterclockwise uh, thread. I've used this, which is the Novrich um, si uh, suppressor and silencer. Um, both of these perform really well. Um, they're about the same size. Literally, there's probably about 5 10 mil in it. Um, although, to be fair, when this is actually fitted, the, this is the uh, silverback, it actually is a little bit shorter because of the way it sits on the muzzle brake. Uh, whereas this does actually sit off a little bit and it is a little bit longer but both of them work well inside they both you know this has baffled foam this also has baffled foam they both work pretty well um, in the gun so that is basically what we have as on the externals it's a very nice gun to work with um, and it is a really, really um, powerful platform. So let's talk a little bit about the internals, what was done to it. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm actually going to show you it pulled apart, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to pull it apart. One of the key things about this gun is this back plate here, and, this butt and the, um, the butt uh, pa um, pad. Uh, basically, when you are using this gun, um, all of the sort of the action is in here. And it actually finishes at this point here. Now, what we've got here is a little cover, which I'm just going to pull off. And that will basically open up the internals of, this, of the gun so you can actually see the spring. So in here we've got a spring. This is our bolt. There's the piston. And you can see at the back here there is a um, spring guide. That actually fits into this piece. Now, this is all essentially removable and it is super quick to remove it. And to do that, you basically look at the bottom here, we have these little catches here, and you can basically uh, use those to kind of just pop this off. And um, what I'm going to do is just try and slide that off without losing everything and pulls that off. I'm just going to pop that out. Take our spring out, and then to remove the bolt, just pop that back. Uh, I'm going to pull the trigger because there is a little catch just at the back here, which is what this actually locks onto when actually cocking. Move that out of the way so we can slide the bolt out, and essentially that is all disassembled. Now, internally, what we have here is we have our 420 uh, millimeter barrel with our hop in the what we call the fast hop. This is basically what I kind of mentioned as basically part of the actual um, rifle. Now, it's actually a pretty important piece. Now, the stock rifle comes with its own SRS hop. It's actually adjusted through these holes here. There's one on each side. And that has actually been be replaced by something called the fast hop. The fast top is um, especially um, handy because of this little dial that we can just see here. That dial allows you to dial in the hop um, very easily by just lifting the bolt, pulling it back and moving the, the, the wheel. And then you can dial that in. So you no need to get an Allen key or a screwdriver or whatever to adjust the hop through this hole. You can do it here very easily. Uh, very easy to do, very, very straightforward. That basically enables you to really sort of dial in the weapon um, very quickly uh, in the field even uh, without having to worry about tools or anything else. It makes it completely toolless. Then we have um, the, the, the element that goes in here. This is essentially the, 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 pit, the, the bolt the piston, the spring, and everything else. Now, we are running um, the Sniper Mechanic SRS Wasp. This is a weighted piston. And essentially, that, that basically goes in this arrangement here. So this is the, the bolt. Uh, in here, we have our um, And essentially, this is basically the, the piece of kit that basically uh, Sniper Mechanic actually designed to go with the SRS 
but also goes with the VSR-10 as well. There is a VSR-10 version. It is essentially a weighted piston. What I have on here is the aluminium weight. It is the essentially middle of the two. And it comes with two other weights. All we have here is the uh, plastic um, weight, which is essentially the same weight as the stock piston. When this is fitted, it becomes the same weight as stock. It is purely plastic. Then we have this guy here, which is the, uh, the steel weight. And this is actually very heavy compared to this, but also compared to this guy as well. Um, so effectively, these are used to adjust the weight of the actual um, piston when firing. And it can affect the FPS and the, of the, and the, uh, of, of the weapon. There are also different sort of um, air brakes here different options for the air brake that are available. Um, this one I've got one, this one I've got in at the moment allows me to um, have a, a much quieter shot, but also reduces the FPS a little bit um, because of that sort of um, element as well. And that is essentially the, the, uh, the wasp piston. And that just fits in there um, in, the, in the go. The other component of the wasp piston is this. This is a spring guide. And basically what we've got here is um, essentially uh, O-rings, piston head, and they fit in this base plate here. And, and that kind of neatly fits into that spot there, locks in, you have your spring on there, into there, and that just acts as the backstop there um, for the actual weapon. These plates are, are changeable. You can essentially adjust the, the stock length with these. Um, basically you're taking this out you can add you can buy additional ones of these so you can make it bigger if you want um, but that's how I have mine and there is my M150 swing um, which I have in there now just to kind of show you this is the, this is the original piston um, it is essentially a good bit lighter than what I've got in at the moment but it, it, it did work quite well I did actually run this initially with this piston um, because the the Wasp wasn't actually available until January this year, um, and I got this um, and fitted it myself. It's a very, very simple thing to fit. Um, it took about you know, 30 minutes to actually do it all, um, slowly kind of going through all the steps and making sure it was greased and, and, and so on. But it was essentially a super, super easy thing to fit. So everything else was fitted by Sniper Mechanics, except for this guy which I then basically added myself later, but it is using a component he designed specifically for this gun. And the great thing about uh, the, the Wasp is it also comes with, because this, this um, spring guide um, also has different spacers, so you can adjust the spring tension to make it fire um, with, more, with more joules, more FPS, um, or less, depending on, on how you set it up. Um, you can use different springs, so I'm using an M150, um, which, as this setup currently, which with the weight of the piston I use, uh, will shoot about 495 um, FPS with a 0.2 gram BB. Um, with a heavier BB, it will shoot around the um, same sort of uh, equivalent, but it, it essentially, with dual creep and everything else, it actually shoots a little bit he heavier, which kind of shoots about 2.3 joules with uh, the 0.2 gram, but it's just a little bit over 2.3 uh, joules, but within limits, because um, the limit in the UK, for instance, is 2.5. Um, it shoots within limit about uh, 2.38 uh, with a bit of dual creep, so there's not a huge amount. So it is really, really, really good. So I'm going to show you, just put this back together. Um, again, so, so how, show how easy it is to sort of um, put together, pop that back in, um, just pop the piston back, pop that back there, pop that down, I'll take the spring, pop that in, pop that on. Just clip that too, and say it does take a bit of force. I'm pushing against a big spring here, but it is really, really easy. And as you say, that's super quick. Um, and you can literally do this in the field. You can 
take the gun, go to a site, and if you need to swap to a weaker spring, you can do, and it is really, really very, very easy. Um, I think probably the hardest thing of putting this back together is getting this little, little um, cover in. Um, it sometimes doesn't go in first time. So that is basically the SRS A1 um, sort of torn down and shown how it's running. It is a really, really nice gun. So let's talk a little bit about the performance of this guy. So as I kind of mentioned, because of the, the nature of the arrangement in here with the piston, the spring and everything else, you can have this shoot pretty much any FPS you desire. Which is why I'm not going to do a chrono test, because I can make this gun shoot whatever I want. What we're going to talk about really is why you have this guy uh, on a sniper rifle is, to be frank, the accuracy of the, the weapon. And when I basically spoke to Sniper Mechanic about making me this gun, um, one of the things I basically said to him is I want to be able to shoot at least 60 to 60, uh, 70 meters consistently with a high degree of accuracy. Um, I can shoot eight, up to 80 meters with this gun, but I want to be able to make sure I hit what I'm aiming at at 60 to 70 meters. And to that end, you know, I've, I've used this gun in a bunch of skirmishes, a bunch of range shooting, and even a milsim, and it has performed really well. And before, uh, just before Christmas, um, I actually did a bit of range shooting, and I posted this picture to Instagram, um, but essentially I wanted to kind of go through this um, here and just talk about this. This is... A uh, little splatter target that I use. It's one of the, the targets I used on the day. Um, it came quite late into the session, but it, it just showed how um, astonishing this actual rifle is. This square is about 17 to 18 centimeters square. To put that in context, a plate from a plate carrier is bigger than that square. So, um, your average plate carrier has a, a sort of a, an 8 by 11 inch um, square, almost rectangular shape. And uh, in essence, this is smaller. Now, this was, as I say, this was taken relatively long into session after I'd kind of got it all dialed in, getting, getting the, the hop broken in because it was quite early after I got this, uh, getting the scope dialed in, everything sort of comfortable, adjusting for the wind and everything else, um, I basically start to get some really consistent shooting. And this shooting was actually done at a range of 65 meters. Uh, the wind was sort of light, probably no more than 10, 10 miles an hour, but sort of probably closer to around five miles an hour mark. And this was done at a range of 65 meters. And this was uh, actually, you know, I measured 65 meters with the laser rangefinder. So effectively, I do know the, you know, the, the accuracy of, of the distance. Now, this is 10 consecutive, 10 consecutive shots. What we have here is 10 shots, all within that square that sort of 18 centimeter square. Granted, a couple are pretty short, close to the edge, but if I was shooting at someone in an airsoft game and getting this kind of accuracy, which I have, is freaking amazing. Um, it is absolutely astonishing because this is just, you know, a great set of shooting. Now, this was actually done with a heavy weight BB. This is, uh, so we're going to, I use the Kicking Mustang 0.48 gram BBs. They're a great BB, um, really consistent. They work with this gun because this guy actually uses one of these. So this, the, the uh, SRS platform is used by a lot of people these days. Um, and there's quite a few um, air, uh, YouTube snipers and so on that use this. Um, and a lot of other YouTubers and a lot of people I'm seeing are using this platform 
and this is the perfect BB for it. Um, it is a nice heavyweight BB, although this will happily work with 0.45s, 0.46s, but these 0.48s are the, the best um, sort of weight for this gun and this setup. Now, there are other brands of BBs available, but um, I'm using the Kicking Mustang ones. There are um, Jeff's BBs do a 0.48 as well. Um, I think some of the other people that do different B, um, um, branded BBs like the, the other snipers like Silo Entertainment, Clean Shot and so on. And I think Novrich even have a 0.48. But this is the best one for, for the job um, in terms of weight. Um, now, I would... I personally don't use bio bbs so um, i've never used a bio bb in, in any of my guns um, but i'm assuming they'll be fine as well but these essentially are what i used with this gun and it's essentially the right the type of bb i use to do this so at 65 meters with this weight of bb that is basically what i was doing when i've used this in games um, with varying different conditions, wind, um, cold, and so on, again, it's performed really, really well um, with this level of consistency in shooting as well. That is the one of the key things. Um, dialing this in um, and you know uh, uh, any wind or anything else is you know possible. Um, you know you can sort of do the various tricks with aiming to left or right to deal with wind, um, tilting the gun to sort of use the hop spin to basically counteract the wind, um, so on. Um, you can essentially do that. And the great thing about the fast stop on this is that makes that sort of, you know, tilting the gun option a little bit easier because you can change the hop so, so easily. Um, it is a really, really good rifle. So that is just the, how well this thing shoots. It shoots really well. Um, as a platform, I have been very, very impressed with it. I, I have loved every shot I've taken with this gun. Um, it has worked really nicely um, in a number of conditions from uh, rain, wind, cold, and sun. Um, and I am looking forward to many more days of shooting this thing um, over the coming months. Now, in terms of um, you know roll, this is to say this is um, a short rifle. That's why I went for the short version of this. There are longer versions. In fact, one of my teammates um, has bought I think it's a 22 or the 20 inch version of this. It's much longer. I have the 16. The reason why I have this is because um, I kind of see my general sniper role as not as a sort of gillied up sniper, but I will wear a ghillie. It's more of a, of a support sniper, um, a counter sniper, someone who's going to basically support the team, um, basically out shoot uh, when, we're, when we're playing a game. You know, I would be the guy that basically um, holds back a little bit when they're moving into a position to take out any snipers that are basically down on that position so I can hit at range, um, do a bit of counter sniping, um, also work as a bit of a, a sort of overwatch once in a position or holding a position down. And that's how I basically use this weapon um, as a kind of a, a support role sort of um, thing. So there we have it, the SRS A1 by Silverback Airsoft, uh, my new sniper rifle. It's a great gun and I um, heartily recommend getting one. And with that, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to know more about the parts that went into this rifle, they will be in the description along with where you can buy. And uh, that will include uh, sniper mechanics details. And thank you all for watching. Have a great day and see you guys next time.